We've got Colin Russell. I don't know what he's doing with his pants. <laughs> um, hello again. Video number two with Jason from Instro. Um, Arbor, granular processing, right? Yes. Uh, this is... Uh, I'm not sure of the full history of this uh, granular engine, but I've been working with uh, Sebastian Lexer, who's a good friend of mine. He's the co-designer of the Arbor, designed the program, the Parrot Plus app. Uh, he's been developing this granular engine for... I think over a decade at this point, you're know, playing with uh, wow. piano. It's it's immense. It's it's great. So this is a a hardware implementation of his granular instrument. So I've been collaborating, you know, coming up with the you know the interface, how to you know how to realize it in hardware, but uh, under the hood, it's uh, it's the Lexer method of um, of granular synthesis, as we're as we're calling it in the workshop. Okay, so I mean, yeah, walk us through it. Yeah, so it is. Um, We've got six buffers here, alpha, beta, delta. Uh, each one is uh, it's got 10 seconds of uh, audio record time that you can capture to, and then you know you can on the fly select between different buffers. You know grains can be coming from any of all the six layering up. And is this just uh, recorded direct on the module? They're stored. Yes, uh, there's uh, for the, the, there's going to be uh, the ability to to do a memory dump and store any content of the buffers or recall. Uh, I think the route I'm going to go, will, there will be a, a USB port on the back, so there'll be, it, it was going to be just an inbuilt flash memory, but if I make it a USB drive, then there's vers versatility there for loading in you know, predefined samples, etc. But it's, uh, it's designed very much to be a, a live performance tool for, for uh, capturing uh, with, with some, some fun little uh, extras. So you can see the little hexagon of, of holes there. It's a built-in condenser mic, so if you have nothing patched in, you've got a condenser okay. mic hitting hitting the inputs uh, for just capturing ambient ambient material. Uh, but again, I'll uh, I'll go with some some good uh, German talk show radio as as a sound source. So let me bring up the. Grund für die Entwicklung seien die anhaltenden bewaffneten Konflikte. It's going to hit capture, and that's going to start recording content into the audio buffer. You can see the record head moving along here. Rief die Politik dazu auf, den do. Einsatz für die beiden... Mute the input, bring it back to the granular playback. So the scan knob, that's scanning through your, your position in the buffer. So if I go past the amount of time that I recorded, there's just silence there. But if yeah. I was to if I was to record more content, it always starts from the beginning. Uh, depending on the level of the dub, which is you know the mix of uh, sound on sound recording, you can destructively overdub and, and replace audio. But say I replaced audio up to up to that position, it would only anything beyond that that was pre-recorded would remain there. So even within a single buffer, there's the ability to you know, turn it little sections almost. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You, you can kind of go back in time and you know, just move the move the cursor just a little bit further, and you're going to be grabbing content from from uh, a previous take. Uh, so visually, we've got the uh, the scan position in the buffer. Length will uh, give you up to three uh, three seconds of length per grain. How many grains? Uh, the intensity control wears internally clock grains. It will go up to 16 uh, polyphonically. You can actually manually clock more, so you can get up to 24. I think it is. These okay. values are you know we're still playing with optimizing, so you know we might be able to squeeze more out of it, but. Sonically, we, you know, we've been working a lot to, to keep it consistent. So when you've got maximum intensity, there's some automatic, uh, you know, like like a, like equal power panning equivalent. You know, it'll, yeah, it'll yeah. keep like more uh, more equal uh, equal amplitude. So you just get you just get the more intensity of layers, but it's not gonna it's not gonna creep up. It's not gonna blow up on you uh, so readily. Uh, so for green texture, we have this parameter here, which is... I was going to say, is there a texture control? Yeah. So it's got a lovely kind of... In the middle, it had a lovely smeared quality to all the grains overlapping. Yep, so in the middle, that's a Gaussian curve, and then it'll interpolate through to square blocks, all the way to a, to a ramp a ramp shape. Uh, this is the probability of uh, direction playback, so hard left, and it's every grain will play forward, hard right, uh, they'll all be reversed, and it actually reverses the green enveloping as well. So you get that that nice sort of uh, reverse swell with the with the ramp shape. 
Uh, in the middle, the bang in the middle, uh, we decided not to go with 50-50 alternating. It's coin toss logic, so it's just a bit more, a bit more musical. We found uh, actually a similarity to that to the actual outputs. We're listening to the main output here, which is all grains from one jack. If you patch out the second, it breaks the normal, and you end up with it uh, uh, distributed. Like an even kind of split. We start that. I mean, the, the graphics sort of imply that with the you know the. the the line splitting it there, but uh, it's a coin toss again, so there's a bit of, of random. Okay. Display. Yeah, yeah. It, sounds, it just sounds a lot more natural um, to us. Uh, so green length, you can go from uh, you know three seconds maximum length, bring it down. If I reduce it further. You can hear it's got a settled in on a constant tone. So this is essentially a a single cycle waveform. Uh, so we've designed it to seamlessly like, you know, turn into a steady pitch of a single cycle loop. Uh, under the hood, uh, it's actually, you know, to, to get the most out of it, it ch it's changing to a, a dedicated wavetable oscillator uh, synth engine. So, okay. so when you've got there, the, the texture now becomes a, you know, a timbre control. So you, know, you get smoother zero crossings depending on where you are in the, in the buffer with the Gaussian. Move more aggressive, and that of course tracks volt per octave, uh, and will update based on what what layer you're in. Oh, uh, what uh, layer? That was the old term. Uh, what what buffer you're in? Some amazing vocoder-esque sounds going yeah, on. Yes, it's extremely vocal. It's uh, yeah, and you know, with CV control over length, you can you can have it like you're jumping from from the you know scattering grains of uh, you know audio playback up to up to synthetic. Pitch control. So the way that this granular engine works for a playback of pitch, if I set to a long duration, bring intensity down, now when I... Now fire a grain, the grain will complete its, uh, its defined duration at the, the pitch it plays at. So let me okay. quickly replace the audio with uh, something like more like a, a constant tone. So there's a... A sine wave. I'll jump to another buffer. Capture that in. Mute that for a sec so we don't get deafened. There we go. So a bit of sine wave content. If I go here, zero intensity, I've got the descending ramp grain. So now whenever I trigger The grains will play at that fixed, that fixed playback. So you know you can even um, you know if you're using a, 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 a CV and gate keyboard, you could put the gate in here to the strike, volt per octave in, and almost like a you know some sort of polyphony. Yeah. Uh, and if we if we flick this across, will it reverse? Exactly. Yep. Or if you have it in the middle, then it'll alternate. Some grains will play back forwards, so you get swells, you get stuff in between. Yeah, that's really and that can be pulling from, from content in any of the buffers. Great, it looks like a quite different way to work with granular. There's been a ton of, like, like, like you said, wavetable, yeah. vocoder esque, kind of, I'm going to say crude synth voice, but maybe crude in just that it's not a typical voice, but you've still got this, this flip flop of envelope shape. Yep, yep. It's really interesting. For uh, capturing audio, uh, you can see there's two input jacks here. So the primary input, that's what gets to the audio buffer for recording. There's a second one labeled onset. So this is actually doing real-time onset analysis detection, FFT based, so it's a combination of amplitude and uh, frequency content. So if I bring that up a bit, I've now got the condenser mic on the front, it's just picking up ambient level. I can set the hold for the minimum record time. Then if it receives a, a trigger, it will, or an impulse or a change in frequency content, it will automatically start recapturing. So if you're using complex audio, patch in here, the microphone normalizes here, the onset detection normalizes to the input. So now, whatever audio is coming in, there'll be that spoken words or any, any complex audio signal, um, then that's going to be automatically capturing content into the buffer. And replacing replacing the, bat the, the the buffer, you know, determined by uh, the hold length, like how long it's going to recapture in. 
And that can be happening. You can be controlling which, which destination you're recording to and create these layers and textures of audio content that can then be referenced and, and processed and, and, and pulled from. On the module itself, we've got CV over scan, CV over length, CV over intensity. Uh, there's also a clock output that will fire on when a green is triggered. Uh, but it's going to ship with this uh, 2 HP expander, which will give you CV over spray layer, the probability. Uh, it's even got a CV control over the, the amount of sound on sound overdubbing. So just about every parameter other than the, you know, the, the analog input level. Yeah, which is super easy to handle anywhere else. Um, yeah, usual kind of questions. Availability, price. Uh, the price we're looking at for this uh, is going to be about uh, 410 pounds. Uh, UK pounds. Uh, we're very close. Uh, they'll be in production and out by the end of the year. So, yeah. Amazing. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, man, wow.